eating anything, so I don't really need these. <laughs> no, neither right. am I. Good morning and good evening to Jeff. We are now live. We had a little uh, technical issue there, which we seem to have resolved. Thank you for working that one out. Yeah, um, well, the technical issue was uh, in my brain. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> to check a sound setting on StreamYard, even though I checked it on my computer. So you know, you know, know that you know that the uh, the word for computer in Chinese is electric brain. So it was actually your electric brain. You can, you can say it was a computer's fault. It was a bug. Anyway, it's fixed now. Um, <clears throat> Jeff, we, we, we've talked a couple of times before, and we're thinking about making this a regular event and looking for names for this event. But uh, the, the bespectacled, bespectacled Boomers was one of the names. And Okay, I'm rebelling some... against that name right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to have something that's a little bit more, um, shall we say, serious, because yeah. I talk about the misperceptions of China, you talk about the misperceptions related to Ukraine, and we're both kind of socialist inclined, am I right to say that? Yeah, yeah. yeah and I talk about um, misperceptions everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere yeah but you seem to have a, a fairly in-depth grasp of what's going on in ukraine and i seem to have yeah. a fairly broad understanding of china um and i think for the time being um we, we're going to be redundant if um if the ukraine war ends and america's hostilities against china stop what are we going to do then we just have to talk about movies or something um <laughs> Kittens. <laughs> Kittens. That'll be nice. Yeah. But I, I want to ask I've got you. news for everybody. Uh, the U.S. is uh, not going to stop being complete <laughs> pigs anytime. Oh, sorry for to pigs for that insult. They're going to not stop being complete cops anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me, let me ask a question. Um, Germany has agreed now to send tanks. America apparently is sending the Abrams tank, but not this year. Do you think it'll all be too late or not? Is this yes. really going to drag too on little, for yet another too year? Too little, too late. Um, I don't know exact figures, mm -hmm. but uh, my recollection is that Ukraine had something like a thousand tanks uh, at the start of the war. Um, and, you know, most of them have been destroyed. Uh, and mm -hmm. Uh, we're talking about a few dozen here that uh, Germany and the U.S. and I think a couple of other countries are. U.K. is also involved in this, yeah. Over over a period of time, so yeah, yeah, um, and you know it has to be over a period of time because uh, you can't just like you know even if you're familiar with another tank, you can't just hop into an Abrams and go uh, use it. Uh, it takes extensive mm. training. Uh, I was listening to, um, I forget who it was, Brian Berletic uh, from Brian Berletic, Atlas yeah. was interviewing mm -hmm. somebody who, you know, is an expert on this stuff and said, basically, you can severely hurt yourself uh, just by not really, really being fully up to speed on what you're doing with uh, an Abrams tank. Um, so um, um, apparently yeah, they still need... They still needs to be manufactured. I think they've got some, but uh, it takes several months just to be trained enough to use the tank at all. And then it takes you know, uh, people with years of experience to effectively use them in combat. That's I mean, I'm not a military expert myself, but that's my understanding from people yeah. who are. The, the British military have got a bigger problem than this. They, they're sending some of their most advanced tanks. And uh, David's comment there said the um, complex secret armor formulations, the Brits are very worried about these tanks falling into Russian hands. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's more important that the tanks don't fall into Russian hands. If they get destroyed, that's one thing. But if they fall into Russian hands, then the technology could be uh, acquired by the enemy which means that they become useless in any future battlefield. But I can't imagine any future battlefield without Russia. If, if Britain are involved in a war, who are they going to be involved in a war with? They're not going to be using tanks in China. That's going to be a sea war. They're going to be destroying, if they can, the eastern seaboard. They're not going to be bringing tanks into China, I don't think. 
I yeah. can't imagine any occupying force ever taking China. It's just too damn big. The Japanese tried it once. The Brits and the Germans, the eight, eight allies, the, the alliance from the 1800s and 90, early 1900s before the end of the Qing dynasty, they never tried to occupy China. It's just too big. And they'd be, yeah. uh, they weren't at war. They were just colonizing. Yeah, and it's got a modern military now, and uh, you know it's mm. very specialized on defense. So uh, it's also got 1.4 billion people, most of whom uh, would would defend their country. They, I mean, Chinese yeah. people are not like not like the uh, the rest of the world seems to think that Chinese people are itching to be rescued from this evil clutches of the CCP, when in fact they're very happy. So they're going to be if if anyone wants to take over China, they, those millions a billion plus people are going to be fighting them too yeah well even russia with i mean at the start of the, yeah even with mm. russia at the start of the war um they only sent in something like one hundred and fifty thousand troops which uh mm. which is why they called it a special military operation in part because it was a limited military operation uh mm. and uh you know it turned out that uh that wasn't enough tro- even though they had you know, overwhelming firepower superiority. That still wasn't enough to uh, do the limited job that they had uh, set for themselves of uh, mm. you know, basically kicking Ukraine out of the Donbass. Um, yeah. And so, you know, then, you know, with after a few months, they you know, called up 300,000 more troops, you know, put them through, yeah. uh, you know, retraining and so forth. Uh, you know, they were already reserves mm. and already had combat experience, most of them. Uh, and you know, give them another year, they could call up a million more, no problem. You know, yeah. and this, you know, this is an interesting people. comment from um, from David again. Um, Saudis, Jordanians to give up their export model, Abrams. I, I wanted not not so much this comment, but I can't imagine the Saudis uh, giving up anything right now because they're yeah. in a civil war with or not civil war, they're involved in the war with Yemen. Um, yeah, I saw. An American general on television, well, not on television, online the other day, stating that uh, Cuba, Venezuela, and countries like this have Russian built military equipment mm. and they should donate to Ukraine <laughs> so that they could then restock with American equipment. What does that tell us about? American, I, mean, I would suggest American exceptionalism here. Um, yeah. Americans think that these people who, they, who they've made enemies of in the last decades, exactly. in the case of Cuba, 70 years, not 70 decades, 70 years. Um, you, this, There it is. David said he heard the same thing. Cuba, they want Cuba to cooperate with the US. <laughs> Why on earth? What now? I, I'm, I'm not going to say why would Cuba do that because it's obvious they, they wouldn't or shouldn't. Why on earth would America expect that? What's the expectation there? Yeah, yeah, that's very strange that they uh, I don't know. Uh, do they really believe that they can get people they've made, made countries they've made enemies of to cooperate with them? That makes no sense. I mean. You know, know, there's 39 countries right now that the U.S. has uh, economic sanctions against, uh, and all 38 of them, besides Russia, are allied with Russia. And you know, <laughs> Cuba and Venezuela, of course, are two of those countries. So mm. it's like, what the hell? Why would why would dream on? Mm, mm. It's interesting that they haven't come to China and asked China to help yet. <laughs> they did, though. They did. They asked China. They did. To- yeah, they asked China I, I, not to send weapons yeah, or anything, but to speak they've out. They've asked and- China not to help Russia, but they've never asked China to help Ukraine, I, as far as I'm aware. Right, but they asked China to condemn Russia. Yeah, yeah, that's been going on a while, and China's just said, look, it's none of our business. We, we're not yeah. getting involved in this. So, I mean, I, yeah, I it's had none a of discussion. our business, but it's your fault it started as well. <laughs> yeah, they, they, there's no doubt that this is NATO's war, and there's no doubt yeah. that NATO is headed by America. So, yeah. this is America's war. Yeah, um, my, my think- point is that even though, of course, uh, for diplomatic reasons, China can't come out and say they support. Russia's military action, even if they do, they can say, look, NATO aggression is what started this. 
Mm. And they have said that. They've been willing yeah. to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but NATO is an alliance. It's it's a group of, um, I, I don't even know how many members, 20-something members of NATO. Something like um, that. But There's what, 14 new ones since uh, the 90s. Okay. <laughs> and, and most of them are uh, more than one inch east, right? Wasn't that the, wasn't <laughs> yeah. that the phrase? We yeah, including the East. eastern half of Germany. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think Germany was was the issue when when Germany oh, oh, yeah, was okay. unified. Not one uh, inch they east said, of Germany. Yeah, yeah, not one inch east of the eastern Germany, which would become one country called, like it used to be, Germany. In yeah. fact, it's not even exactly as it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very oh, interesting one. Germany, I just. Uh, I like across this one. There's a clever idea. pun here. Speaking of Germany, I just came across an interesting stat the other day. There actually weren't a huge number of Jews in uh, Germany uh, you know, prior to World War II. It was like half a million out of 40 million or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, most of them fled the country. Uh, yeah. So actually, uh, there were more Jews killed in the Holocaust in Ukraine by quite a bit than were killed in Germany. Even yeah, though, of course, I've, the I've Germans were involved yeah. in killing all over Eastern Europe. But mm. a fourth, fully a fourth of the Jews killed in Holocaust were killed in Ukraine. And now we have Israel supporting Ukraine, too. Yeah. They just beg us belief. I mean, this is, is there something that we're missing? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, I guess, well, Zelensky, you know, the head uh, Jewish person in Ukraine, the uh, president of the country, who you know, is ethnically Jewish, uh, you know, he's a collaborator with these Nazis. So, you know, um, there's definitely precedent for that. Is, is there, um, is it collaboration or is he forced into this, do you think? Uh, hard to know. Um, but, I mean, he... You know, at least, you know, in his public statements and his policies, he's fully on board with the mm. whole right-wing agenda, including the uh, you know, language uh, uh, restriction, you know, the uh, language discrimination, and um, you know, threatening to uh, you know invade uh, Crimea and uh, you know all of you know everything that. You know, they have, you know, maybe not extermination of Russians as some of the Nazis in Ukraine have publicly said they want to do, but uh, you know, most of most of the right wing agenda he's on board with. So, do you think that if Russia had not gone into Ukraine, what would have been the next step? Let's say, let's say Russia exercised the restraint that I think China is showing because China mm -hmm. keeps getting hammered with the Taiwan question. Um, and, and it's showing an incredible amount of restraint. I mean, there mm -hmm. are American troops in Taiwan. So there's a, there's a lot of things going on in the background, I'm sure, but it's showing an incredible amount of restraint. What would happen? What would have happened? Hypothetical. Russia never invaded Ukraine. What would have happened in that region? Uh, well, uh, Ukraine uh, would have launched a full-scale invasion of the Donbass, and instead of losing you know, 150,000 or however many it is soldiers uh, in the Ukrainian military, uh, there would have been tens of thousands of civilians killed in the Donbass by the Ukrainian mm -hmm. army. That's mm -hmm. what would have happened. And then, of course, if that had happened, then Russia would have been right to have invaded yeah, and then uh, they will probably would react anyway, but too late for all the uh, civilians lost in uh, the Donbass. Agreed, Dunbass. agreed. But, I mean, if, if Russia had gone in there to protect civilian lives instead of, as as the allegations are, they went in there unprovoked, if civilian lives were being lost. But weren't civilian lives being lost already? Yeah. Um, yeah, approximately... Uh, I think a, a, a little over 8,000 civilians in uh, the Donbass and, you know, a few thousand, uh, you know, militia people in uh, mm -hmm. the Donetsk and Luhansk uh, armies and then, you know, a few thousand uh, Ukrainian troops uh, for a total mm -hmm. of 14,000 over eight years. So 14,000 dead Ukrainians over eight years. Yeah. Russian, yeah. ethnic. And, and, you Russian. know, some Russians, not very yeah. many. You know, there Not were uh, a few, 
Yeah, there were a few volunteers from Russia, but of course Russia didn't formally. But send but aren't these? Um, so remember, I I don't know very much about this, so yeah. that's why I ask you lots of questions. Aren't yeah. these people who are in the uh, Donbass and Lugansk? Aren't they ethnically Russian? Uh, generally speaking, yes. So they they're effectively Russian people who were being killed by Ukrainian people inside yeah. of Ukraine. Um, right. it, I mean, in, in every country we have different different ethnicities. You know, I, yeah. I grew up in the UK and we had all kinds of different ethnicities that have moved in there, um, including, if you think about it, the Anglo-Saxons are not British. <laughs> they they, they yeah. came from Germany a couple of thousand years ago. Um, we have a lot of um, more recent migration. So we have migration. China doesn't have that migration. What it does have is ethnic minorities living within its borders. It has Russians. Yeah. It has uh, Mongolians. It has the Kazakhs, the Turks, the Turkestanis. The, these, these people, they come from their own area. And the, and the Uyghurs are another uh, branch of those. They've come in and, and they've lived here for hundreds or even thousands of years. Uh, yeah. they, uh, the borders used to be a lot more flexible and more porous in those days. Um, yeah. it's, well, it's, actually, there are uh, you know hundreds of thousands of people in uh, the Donbass region that mm. are actual Russian citizens, like they have dual citizenship. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, they have relatives back and forth on both sides of the border. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, Crimea, of course, is a majority ethnic Russian. Uh, I don't know what the uh, proportion is now because they haven't done a census in a long time, but, you know, uh, two decades ago, it was 70% uh, Russian. Right. Um, and there's been a lot of migration um, since then um, in mm. and out. Um, so I'm sure it's higher by now. Um, I don't know if the Donbass is uh, majority ethnic Russian, but they are certainly overwhelmingly majority Russian speaking. And of course, one of the issues uh, was that the Ukrainian government was trying to discriminate against the Russian mm. language, wouldn't let it be taught in schools and put in publications and so forth, or used yeah. in uh, public meetings. Um, what do you think of this question from Shady has? Well, it's not a question, it's, a, it's a, an opinion. I think uh, Zelensky started with decent intentions, rather naively, probably, yeah then learned how dirty and dangerous Ukrainian politics are and how to play ball with the U.S. Um, what do you um, think of that? Do you think he well, started with, with the good intentions? I remember he got I mean, voted in on the basis yeah. of he would uh, uphold the Minsk agreement and bring peace to the region. That clearly hasn't happened. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, he uh, his uh, benefactor was uh, the Ukrainian oligarch who literally started, you know, provided the starter funds for the Azov Battalion, uh, who also, interestingly enough, is Jewish. <laughs> but, uh, um, is that but, this one? Uh, I mean, Kol Kolomiski? Kolomiski? Kolomiski, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it, unless Zelensky was incredibly uninformed, he had to know that. Mm -hmm. you know, who his boss was but or benefactor in the presidential race and boss when he did his TV show, Nikola mm -hmm. Moisky, same dude, who also started <laughs> Nazi groups in Ukraine. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of what he said, he said he was for peace, and, you know, he had this famous meeting in eastern Ukraine with the, uh, I guess it was the Azov people, and yeah. they, you know, kind of, you know, uh, told him to get lost. Up and, you know, <laughs> you know there were death threats against him and uh, so forth. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, you know, he might have been intimidated, but, uh, you know, I don't know if I would necessarily say his intentions were good. Uh, you know, I don't know. But, you know, he's surely, you know, corrupt and sold out and uh, evil now, you know. Well, here, here's the bottom line. It's, this really is the bottom line. Ukraine is a war to make money for certain people in the USA. Um, yeah, and also and also to attempt to uh, destabilize Russia. I mean, that's explicitly stated in uh, yeah. uh, by and it's, U.S. It's been restated there. several times. Yeah. yeah. Who who destroyed Nord Stream now? <laughs> <laughs> Russia. <laughs> well, I, I've heard it was neo neocons, and I'm not even sure what a neocon is. But uh, I keep hearing all sorts of different things that, uh, it, it, that it was destroyed in order to destroy the relationship between Russia and Germany 
And uh, obviously Russia would not do that. But remember, I had this theory that Russia might have done this and pretended it could have been a huge false flag operation. So they pretended it was someone who was trying to destroy the relationship between Germany and the US, if such a thing exists. Yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't, it's not in anybody's interest except the US and the, uh, uh, the few mm. European countries, which are Poland, and uh, I forget the other one, one of those Scandinavian countries uh, who uh, you know, built a pipeline that supplies natural gas. So they have a vested mm. interest. Um, yeah. But Germany certainly doesn't. Russia certainly doesn't. Uh, I don't think anybody else in Europe uh, does. Uh, you know, mm. The U.S. is the main benefactor of this pipeline being blown up. Um, Interestingly, China's, China's benefited from this as well. Surprisingly, well, yeah. maybe China yeah. did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. They sent a submarine. Um, yeah. China, China was, signed a contract. I mean, it, it was um, it was worldwide, globally notified that China had signed a contract uh, with uh, Qatar, or UAE, last year, uh -huh. uh, back in November. But a year before that, in November 2021, USA and China signed what was at the time the world's largest liquid gas deal. And they were buying X amount of tons every year from the US. Uh, to, to bring into China. Now, mm -hmm. of course, that, that's not coming to China now. Uh, so effectively, it's being loaded onto ships with Chinese paperwork. China are selling it to Germany, and Germany are having it delivered there. So it's never arriving here. The paperwork is just going through the, the system of brokerage and um, whatever they call that, uh, where they, they, they on-sell a, a, a shipment before it ever leaves the, the, the port of demarcation. It's being on sold to a, a, a different client. So Germany are buying Chinese gas, which is coming from America, mm -hmm. and, and and at a fair profit too. Uh, and yeah. I say fair, a good profit. The fair is probably not the right word to use here. It's a pretty good profit. Uh, yeah. Somebody said 150 million per ship, but I've never confirmed that. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, so well, China, China has done well out of that. Yeah, and. Uh, I can't remember if China is one of the ones doing it, but there are countries that are selling Russian oil to Europe. <laughs> so, India. India is doing yeah. that right now. Yeah, India is buying Russian oil at a, at a very good price, very a premium price. They've got a long-term deal, and uh, they're selling it on probably through American brokers who are making money too. This yeah. is really, that's what this is all about, isn't it? And, yeah. and the poor Ukrainians are fighting each other because they don't like each other, but they're really pawns in a much bigger world. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mm. think that, uh, you know, the uh, fascist faction in Ukraine is a uh, minor. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, I've heard that. I didn't well. know this. There you go. I learned something new every day. Zelensky was yeah, a Russian speaker before becoming, he I could even not heard... even speak Ukrainian. He speaks English fairly well. I even so heard that uh, he like pretended to make um, mistakes about uh, Russian to give the impression that he was, you know, Ukrainian who learned Russian. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> hmm. um, That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, you don't often hear Mao Zedong speaking uh, because uh, he had a very strong Hunan accent and wasn't very good at Mandarin. Uh, hmm. and, and that that's a fact too so i mean he was chinese of course but uh, he's he grew up in a regional area in um, not far from changsha and he spoke local language hunanhua and and so when he did become the leader of china his, his language skills i mean he obviously could speak chinese but uh, he didn't speak it as well as he spoke his local language mm -hmm. So that does happen in places where they've changed. Well, we're getting a lot of comments here. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with the comments. Oh, I don't um, see another one. You can't see the comments? Uh, well, no. I mean, I see them when they first appear on the screen. But yeah. and, and, and David says, Mao has a very high squeaky voice, which is true. He had a very high squeaky voice. Mm -hmm. there's, there's another little interesting fact. The Pope speaks Ukrainian. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, why would that concern you, Hazza? Shady Hazza. There are two Hazzas in my life. Um, one is just called Hazza. And Shady Hazza knows who the other one is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let, let's let's move on. What else is going on in the world? 
Well, um, I mean, yeah, I don't know how much time we want to uh, go on because uh, you just know. another ten yeah. minutes or so okay. at, at the most. Yeah. I've got a ten o'clock, and you've got stuff to do. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, well, I mean, uh, well, China's had a few uh, COVID deaths the last uh, month or so. Um, we had it recorded sixty thousand, but that was yeah. that was several weeks ago. There's got to have been more, and I haven't seen any figures come out. Yeah. Um, we. Also, I mean, uh, um, my wife got a phone call yesterday. Her father's friend passed away, uh, mm. and it's possible we haven't had this confirmed. But he was he was on dialysis three times a week. He's not been very well. He's been in and out of the yeah. hospital. So yeah. I mean, he wasn't expected to live long. But um, you know, he suddenly he came home over the Chinese New Year from a hospital visit, and um, he had some trouble breathing, and he basically passed away uh, they took him back to the hospital and he passed away that night uh, so we're, we're waiting to hear was that a COVID death or was that uh, related to what he had but his, his dialysis wasn't related to his breathing problems so I'm thinking that's probably the first person that I know who has died of COVID and that's yeah. only the second person I've heard of who has died of COVID I have one friend who lost a grandparent I don't know anyone else who lost someone. So in terms of numbers, the numbers are not high. I mean, I literally know thousands of people in China and I'm hearing yeah. now this is the second person and it's only suspected COVID. And that's only by me, not by them. Yeah. I mean, no one has come from the hospital and said, we, we're going to test for COVID because we think he might have. Um, well, so yeah, I mean, it's interesting you know, that, that it's happened like that. The Go figure on. that I saw the other day from the... Um, um, Ministry of Health at uh, CDC uh, mm -hmm. was that deaths uh, peaked at around a little over 4,000 a day, which is, uh, I mean, that's higher than the highest wave in the U.S. in terms of absolute number of deaths, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, for any wave that the U.S. has had, but, you know, of course, proportionally, because China is four times bigger, uh, it's, it's not as high. So, um, you know, uh, it, well, there's, there's the one other number of deaths as you know the worst wave that the U.S. has had, but mm -hmm. uh, you know proportionate to the population, it'll be less. Yeah, there's there's another aspect to this. Uh, we had a big dinner party here a couple of nights ago with some friends that my wife's friends that we haven't seen for for a few months, and uh, all got together. Chinese New Year is the time for doing that. Um, I we asked the question, who? who had COVID, of course. One yeah. guy said, I didn't, I haven't had it yet. Now, he's he's only the second person I know in China who hasn't had COVID. Now, I'm connected to people in Beijing, I'm connected to people in Shanghai, I'm connected to people in Chongqing, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, I'm connected to people in many cities. Nobody knows anyone who didn't have it. And the unofficial statistics are that about 80% of the country had COVID. 80% yeah. means more than a billion people. Now, yeah. thinking about this, a billion people, when it was going through its worst time last year, two, two and a half, three, three years ago now, it was killing at the rate of something like um, 3.6 in some places, but not in China. It was 1.1% of the people who got COVID died of COVID. And that's why China no, said this well, is that, unacceptable. I mean, you know, you know, there's not necessary. You can't really um, you, uh, rely on the figures for case numbers because I mean, different of countries not. have different policies on testing. Yeah. So of course not. Of you, know, course. you have to but, uh, do. But you, let's you do a random t sample test of uh, mm -hmm. you know, probably of antibody, so you can catch people who aren't no longer test positive, mm -hmm. uh, and then you can get a gauge of how many cases there have been, and then you can compute a fatality rate. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, you know. David says a lot of people, a few people in Beijing have not contacted COVID. Um, yeah. Everyone I know in Beijing has. Um, and I saw Jason was here a little while ago. He's in Beijing. He and he caught it too. But he might have a, he's, he's an American living and working in uh, in, in Beijing. And he yeah. and I well, are I friends. Here, actually I, was met seeing, I was seeing figures of about 85%, you know, give or take, uh, in the larger cities in china and i assume yeah. that and that's 
you know, an estimate from the health ministry. So I assume what they did is exactly what I said. Yeah, uh, they 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 the test numbers, a random but... sample of people. Yeah. Um, and if they did that, then that's a pretty accurate number. Yeah. Um, so, and it's probably Andy's lower looking... than that in the rural, er rural areas or uh, less densely populated areas because they're not as densely populated. So and and more I mean it's 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 the isolation. Some of these villages uh, and I've cycled through these places. You know that you you cycle thirty kilometers, you come across a little village. You cycle twenty more kilometers, and then there's a town. And those that that village it has a bus. It has a bus service running through it twice a day or something like that. So they're not going in and out so much. The isolation, the the less density, the numbers, and that's why they were worried about Chinese New Year because that little village has probably got twenty or thirty people who live there who are yeah. currently working in Shenzhen or Guangzhou or, or you know, somewhere like that. So this urban migration situation. Now the bottom line is, un unless a million people have died, then China did the right thing. If a million people well, have died, no, then opening no, up was probably still the wrong thing. Um, no, but I mean, you, you're talking about a billion people caught COVID last month. Okay, but why did a billion people need to catch COVID? You know, I don't know. There's ways of They're, preventing it that don't involve lockdowns. Uh, and uh, you know, <coughs> um, mm. and, uh, I can't remember if I've talked about them with you before, but basically mm. uh, things like improving uh, ventilation, uh, having air filters. I've got a air filter. Yeah, next door you, in the bedroom you've got to remember that country. China's still an underdeveloped country okay, in, but in the cities. It. In the cities, yeah. there's a lot of people with you know For enough sure. money, and the yeah. government can. If the government can spend fifty billion dollars on COVID tests, they can spend fifty billion dollars uh, making sure that you know most yeah, uh, public probably, places have air filters or UV lights. Or it better would ventilation. Be a lot more than fifty billion, but there you go. Okay. You're right. But, yeah. I mean, they could um, go a long way toward that. Let, let's move on to the war, uh, the, the pending war. What is, what's the view of this? Uh, I, I saw this, the four-star general issuing a memo mem to his flunkies, to his subordinates, to get ready. Uh, and it, well, shoot for the head is a pretty silly thing to do. You shoot for the body. You shoot for the uh, the biggest mass that you can hit. Right. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he, he did He did actually put out a memo saying that he wanted his troops ready. He wanted everybody ready and he didn't care what everybody else said about this, but he wanted his troops to be sharp and ready so that they were the best they could be for this war that he said, uh, I hope I'm wrong, but I expect this to happen by, 20, I think he said 2024, but anyway, 2025, um, we, we're going to war. Do you think that's uh, that's a possibility? Well, you know, China is certainly oh, not probability. Go China's China, not, no, right? Yeah, um, mm. yeah. I, you know, it depends on how crazy the people who decide these things are. You know, mm. uh, so I don't know. Let's hope not. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, we it's it's uh, nine thirty six now. We said we're twenty forty minutes at the maximum. Um, normally we would go on a little longer. We had a couple of technical issues. We both had uh, some communication issues. Uh, it seems that your your um, Twitter account and my Twitter account don't talk to each other very well either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're, we're, we're going by emails. And I think both of us, uh, this is Jason, there is no way the US is going to attack China. It's suicide. The US yeah. could never invade. Uh, uh, and, I, and I think this is this is absolutely true. So that's that's Jason who lives in uh, Beijing. Jason, uh, how many people do you know caught COVID? Or oh, sorry, better question: How many people do you know who didn't catch COVID? Um, and I th and I think this is this is the big one. Um, the alternative: They are going to goad China into attacking Taiwan. China isn't going to fall for that. No. But if they were to do that, then the Americans would use Japan. Australia for sure, possibly Korea, and they would try and encourage the Philippines to get involved as well. Uh, oh, there you go. There's Jason. There's Jason. One person did not catch it. He, he clarifies that the next comment, one person did not catch it. That's mm -hmm. Jason in Beijing. So there you go. That, we're looking at huge numbers. Um, let's, let's wrap it up here. Um, okay. Ukraine, in a very short sentence, What's the prediction for the next month or so? 
Uh, I don't know about the next month because uh, I don't think that you know Russia is trying to move too fast. You know, they they are trying to minimize their uh, casualties. Um, mm. But uh, I mean, they've basically got most of their you know three hundred thousand uh, troops that they called up uh, in place now. So you know, they mm. are going to and already are to a significant extent going on. The offensive, and they've they're about to take uh, the city of Bring Bakhmut. Is going to start is, soon. Yeah, the city of Bakhmut is like a, a linchpin of uh, Ukraine's defensive structures uh, uh, in uh, you know the, the Donbass area. It's kind of like their Magino line, I guess. Uh, they've spent mm. years building up these trenches and so forth, um, and so it's taken Russia a really long time to kind of grind that down. But they're getting close to the point where they are about to break the most important part of that uh, defensive line. So once mm. they do that, you know, things will proceed a bit faster. So we've, we're starting to see a spring offensive that will improve. Not improve, that's not the right word. That that yeah. will improve Russia's position. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and this on the COVID thing, most of our friends caught it. Say, almost everyone I'm talking to has the same comments. And it, but... There's someone else who avoided it, so that's nice to know. So um, on the Taiwan thing, uh, somebody made the comment that if uh, Taiwan puts nuclear weapons there, that would be a red line. If the U.S. Yeah. puts an army Which base... Which there were at one Taiwan, point, you know. I wasn't aware of that. but uh, Yeah, I back in the it, uh, 50s, hmm. maybe up through the early 60s, uh, the U.S. had right. nukes in Taiwan. Okay. So uh, in the U.S. already has a training force, a, a, short, a small training force in yeah. Taiwan and has done for over 10 years. That came out about 18 months ago. Uh, it was it was denied, 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 and then accepted. Yeah, we, we do have American yeah. troops there. That's the red line. Uh, the, the two There are two red lines for China. On that happy note, um, should we call it a day and both move on to our other respective errands that we have? and uh, talk yeah. to each other again in about two weeks? Um, well, uh, something like that. Um, I, you know, I was hoping maybe we could. Uh, I'm in town and you know, in my home studio set up until like the uh, 16th, I believe. Uh, okay, well, that's more than two weeks away. So Yes, two okay. weeks away. <laughs> I'm um, away from the 5th to the 15th, but I should be able to do it from a, from a hotel room. I'm, I'm only oh, in Shenzhen, okay. and it's quite modern over there. They have technology. So we <laughs> yeah. can do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, <laughs> speaking of news, one uh, piece of news on my end is that I finally completed the article I've been working on for over a month. Ukraine so article. Kind of an update on the Ukraine stuff. Um, Where can we find it? Uh, you can find it at uh, jeffmelton.substack.com. Um, and let's see, maybe I can put an exact link to it in the comments. Uh, Jeff Melton is one word. At, yeah, let me. Jeff Melton at Substack. Go on. Jeff Melton. Okay, I put the link uh, there in the comment. Uh, I can't see it. Oh gosh, there's a lot of comments coming through. Yeah, yeah. well, in, no, in the private chat between you and me. Oh, the private. Sorry, sorry. Okay, you're let right, me sorry. put it in the comments. Sorry. Okay. No, no, um, it's okay. I can, I can copy this. Oh, huh. And for some reason, I can't make a comment. No. That's weird. Oh, maybe because I'm not logged in. Okay, but I put it in a private chat, so. Yeah. This is an article that you've been working on for a long time. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. It's a response to a uh, article slash speech that somebody from the uh, DSA, Democratic Socialists of America, uh, put out uh, back in uh, November. Um, and uh, basically, um, they kind of take the line of the you know, actual peace movement in the United States, which... Uh, uh, for the most part, uh, you know, they want peace. They say, let's have peace. Let's have negotiations. Let's you know, draw all the troops back and so forth. Mm -hmm. But they characterize what happened as Russia invaded Ukraine, and they don't really provide a whole lot of the context uh, that led up to it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, think that Russia's uh, doing this like for its own, you know, like 
selfish they, gains rather than they're very good at it, aren't they? They, they, the they chip away, <clears throat> they chip away at the relationship, destroying tiny little parts of it. And when there's a slight little response, they accuse the opposer of aggression. Right. They've been doing this with China for years. They and they, yeah. of course they did it with NATO, did it with Russia. Yeah. yeah. And you know, that okay. propaganda has rubbed off on the peace movement, unfortunately. So basically disinformation yeah. disbunkers. This this could be an J and J disinformation debunkers. Mm. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On that happy note, that we've got ourselves a good name there, disinformation debunkers. Uh, but it's basically only on those two countries. But we might have uh, we might have more to add to it later on. Oh, Let's sure. get together in about two weeks' time and say goodbye and thank you very much. We've got seventy three views there, which is a lot more than I expected today. Um, yeah. We weren't even sure we were going ahead about an hour ago. All right. Thanks very much, and we'll catch up again in a very short period of time, sometime within the next two weeks, if that's okay with you. Yes, for sure. Okay, cool. See you then. Go and do your errands, and I'll go and do mine. And thank you, everybody, right. for that watching. Was that was uh, a very interesting little chat. Cheers.